Hey everyone, it's Ed Kime from over at Quantia, and welcome back to another day of the Quantia Challenge. As always, we invite you to check out our Quantia Unlimited offer, which is unlimited commission-free stock and option trading, along with all of our web tools, for just $99 per month. And it's what we use here at the Quantia Challenge. So without further ado, let's dig on into today's portfolio. Um, we made some adjustments last week. Uh, we had quite a bit of trading to be done on Friday. Uh, our main concern at the time was trying to balance out our beta weighted delta to get a little bit closer to a neutral state. We were starting to get close to uh, positive 100, which would have been uh, pretty bad on down days. Um, as we can see, the market is pretty flat today. Uh, it's kind of settled in. Uh, it doesn't look like there's too much excitement going on. Uh, as a quick review, I mean, we are bullish on Carnival. That's uh, recovering from a bit of a drop last week. Um, we opened up this bearish position on Facebook on Friday. That's been moving in our direction. You'll notice our our uh, low end strike is 165, which means we want this to be below 165, preferably as far below as possible. But of course, that's that's a trade that goes out about five weeks, so we still have quite a bit of time uh, to wait and see how that's going to play out. Uh, we are also uh, bullish on Microsoft. Um, it has uh, dropped a bit since we uh, last adjusted our position. Overall, Microsoft's treated us pretty well, but um, right now we're just trying to see if we can't play a little bit off the volatility around the stock and kind of keep a bullish bent uh, to make some money in the long run. And then we are waiting on Mic uh, Micron to sort of subside. Uh, this is a trade that went sideways on us early on and just hasn't really been worth it to close out. One of the things I did look at was I'd considered coming in and potentially doing a roll to try to uh, capitalize on a little bit of the profit that's available. Here's our current PL for the end of the week when the trade expires. As you can see, we have a lot to gain in the event that we drop, uh, you know, in the event that the, the underlying drops down to, uh, you know, 13%, uh, which is pretty unlikely. Um, otherwise, the rest of this is just gaining value back on liquidity because right now it would cost us a little bit more to close out the trade than it would be to just let the whole thing uh, reach the end and uh, and expire. Uh, or actually, we wouldn't even let it expire. We'd, we'd probably want to try to close it out at a break even, which we may still do at some point this week. Um, but otherwise, the assignment, because we're short calls, because it's a call position, we will have to close it out one way or the other. Either we let it get assigned or ex and exercised, or we buy to close. But ideally, it's going to be a, kind of a damage control situation there. Now, one of the ideas that I had here was, if you take a look at this PNL, we, do, we don't expect this to happen. We consider this lost money. However, what if we were to say we don't, you know, we could potentially roll our short call down here up and kind of flip it. Like, let's say we rolled it up to 37. Let me show you what that looks like. So we've got our short call position here. I'm going to click the roll and we're going to go down to the 15th. And I'm going to say that I want to look at the, let's say 37 call here. Now what this is doing, it's going to model the theoretical transaction where we've bought back our 34, 33 and a half call and we've sold this 37 call to replace it. And we get a PNL that follows this yellow line here. Now you can see the yellow line way more profitable than the blue line, uh, especially if we don't anticipate that big drop. But the downside is if we make that trade, we're effectively locking in the loss that we had here and opening ourselves up to a huge loss in the event that it dropped down. So you can see in this case, we could theoretically lose um, 2000 on a trade, which would be the worst case of this trade, locking in the full loss and then having this guy turn around for a full loss. Um, I, I don't anticipate that happening. Um, it, it could happen. Of course, I didn't anticipate the big surge in the underlying stock. But one of the main reasons I wouldn't want to do something like this is actually because if we take a look at the impact to our portfolio, it bumps up our beta weighted delta to 90. And that means that, you know, in the event that the market decides to, uh, you know, drop this week, we would get hit pretty hard, not just in this stock. I mean, obviously this stock, this would be a devastating drop if, it, if we ended up going down and losing $2,000 on the overall uh, position. But this notion of uh, the, the rest of our book is already bullish to begin with. And so we'd be taking away uh, our little bit of, right now the impact on the overall portfolio is, is pretty negligible, but we'd be adding a substantial amount. I mean, the majority of our, of our bullish book would actually be in this new position. So I'm not I'm not planning to take it on, and we will figure out how we close this out a little bit um, later on. Not, but probably not today. Uh, I am on the lookout for 
other stocks that we could get into that our if I reset this other stocks that we're looking into that could potentially add to our um, that we could get bearish on in order to uh, pull down our uh, beta weighted delta a little bit so if we take a look at the equity change all we're doing here is we're just sorting by the biggest losers on the day and then a lot of these are not they're probably not stocks you really want to get involved with from an options perspective so I usually look and say I want to see at least good uh, option liquidity and then we can see there's a bunch of stocks here like uh, you know Activision um, they're in a bit of trouble right now and they have earnings coming up so we'd avoid them uh, I don't really want to touch gold I'm actually you know I feel pretty good about Roku over the long run so I wouldn't want to bet against them uh, for the immediate time being more gold and then some other stuff. I haven't really done any research on these stocks, so um, I'm, you know, not inclined to just blindly open a position right now. But I wanted to raise that as a good way to, if you're looking for a bearish position to take, one of the things that I f I like always a lot is to take a look at the uh, the equity change. And for example, right now I might go check out tech or, uh, <laughs> or uh, Petrolio Brasileiro. Actually, I stay away from the petroleum companies. Maybe Baidu. I could see uh, getting bearish on Baidu just because of the uh, the trade war going on. Um, but for now, we're not actually going to mess with any of this stuff. I do want to take a look at the one-day uh, earnings trades. Uh, there are a few that are available. Shopify is interesting. Uh, I, I'm a little bit bullish on Shopify. Uh, it's a company that I think uh, has a lot of potential to just continue. They've, they've been having a really good go of it so far. Uh, if we take a look and we drill into them, we can see that they do have their earnings coming up. <clears throat> they announce, I assume, after market today. Oh, no, before market tomorrow. Um, right now, the volatility is pretty high. But the thing that I, for, for the earnings one, we could definitely pull a lot off that. But if we take a look at the valuation of their earnings IV richness, it's really not that rich. So it's under 200 uh, basis points. So under two percentage points off, as you can see from these two numbers, which means that the um, the pricing is is not it's not far off the, the options aren't particularly rich so if we were to just take a look at what it would be like to trade these guys with uh, like a an earnings calendar straddle uh, we'll go to the 177 and a half and we'll say we wanted to sell this straddle if we throw this at the book and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go back to the previous view where we have that trade I was looking at I'm gonna invert it for a long straddle and then shift out one week so we can have uh, this calendar straddle in place. Uh, this kind of trade, you know, again, this is a, this is a overly optimistic PNL because the, uh, the the current state of the option pricing. But the main thing to, that we care about is if we were to look at trading this uh, based on how the pricing lines up, we'd pay somewhere between a dollar thirty-five and two forty to open the position. And the hope is that after earnings gets cleared up tomorrow. What we'd want to see is that the position we were, we'd be able to sell our long, or at least close the entire thing out for a credit that is greater than we're opening it for here. And I know that sounds pretty obvious. You know, you want to obviously sell for more than you bought for, but in this particular case, there should be an edge for us. Um, there should be some kind of edge for us because the near-term volatility is going to drop a lot more. And I've got tons of prior art on this. We've, we've gone through a bunch of these trades and, and talked through them a lot. My main concern, though, is this liquidity is not very good. Um, it's already not good, so I don't know how great it's going to be uh, once we get to, really once we start looking at things tomorrow after the earnings are cleared up. But for the time being, I'm just going to step back. We're not going to make any adjustments today. Uh, if we take a quick review of the Greeks, we're under 40 for our positive uh, beta weighted delta. We've got a slightly negative, uh, we've got a relatively neutral beta weighted gamma. Um, we are earning money as time goes by on theta, a very little bit as a net book. And then um, we are a little short Vega, which means that we don't, you know, we'd like to see volatility go down a little bit. That's probably due to the fact that we're almost entirely credit spreads here. Um, actually, we're, yeah, we're pretty much entirely credit trades. So, uh, yeah, that's no surprise. And then uh, row, not too worried about. But we're doing okay. We're kind of hanging in there. Um, we'll probably do a little bit more adjustment tomorrow. I'm going to see if I can't get a little better research and look for a, a nice bearish position to take. Ideally, something that is three to six weeks out. Uh, if you have any ideas, please, you know, ping us, let us know. Uh, if you want to see any specific trade types or any setups, uh, let me know because we are kind of looking for some, uh, some creative opportunities to end the market. Uh, but I'm going to sum it up right there. Hope everybody's having a great start to the week.
If you have any questions or feedback, of course, leave us a comment below or hit us up at hello at quantra.com. And as always, good luck and good hunting.